Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at how Thanksgiving became a national holiday in the United States. Sarah Josepha Hale, one of the great women in American history, campaigned for nearly 20 years to get Thanksgiving made a national holiday. It previously was only celebrated, as we think of it, in New England. Although some other regions had similar events at differing times of the year, and often multiple times in those years. Basically, whenever something particularly good happened, it was common to have a day of thanks, usually directed to God, though most of these days little resembled what we think of as Thanksgiving. Often, these were days for fasting and offering prayers of thanks. During Hale's campaign, which spanned five presidents before she found one that was open to her idea in Abraham Lincoln, she continually lobbied various congressmen, wrote annual editorials on the subject, wrote annual letters to every governor in the United States, and sent a steady stream of letters to the US president of the day as well. Ultimately, she was able to convince Lincoln that it would be a good idea to help unify the country once the Civil War ended. Her final letter to Lincoln on the subject was mailed on the 28th of September, 1863. After reading it and thinking it over on October 3, 1863, Lincoln decided to declare the last Thursday in November as a national Thanksgiving holiday, which it became that same year. Prior to this, the only national holidays that existed in the US were Independence Day and Washington's birthday. From that point on, until the point when Congress officially set the date of US Thanksgiving into law in 1941, every president, with the exception of Roosevelt, would annually declare the last Thursday in November as a national holiday for giving thanks. Roosevelt declared the second to last Thursday in November as Thanksgiving in 1939, 1940, and 1941 in order to extend the shopping season. Unfortunately, only about half of the states went along with him. Most of the rest, excepting Texas, stuck with the tradition of the last Thursday in November. Texas decided to take both as a holiday. This mess ultimately required Congress to step in and officially set the date in October of 1941 to go into effect in 1942. In true congressional form, the date they set was a compromise, being the fourth Tuesday, which was sometimes the last and sometimes the second to last. Hale's contributions to Thanksgiving didn't stop there. She wrote numerous editorials that were widely circulated, outlining various recipes to be used for Thanksgiving dinner. These included many things that would not likely have been served at the original Thanksgiving, such as turkey, stuffing, pumpkin pie, cranberry sauce, and mashed potatoes. So who was Sarah Hale, and how did she come to be so influential, given that she was a woman born in 1788 to relatively humble beginnings, at a time when it was rare for a woman to receive any sort of education, formal or not, let alone go on to be the editor of one of the most successful magazines in the United States, as she did? Hale's parents both believed women should be educated and saw to it that Sarah received an education even though she wasn't able to formally attend school. Rather, her parents homeschooled her in the beginning. Later, her advanced education was handled by her brother Horatio. When Horatio attended Dartmouth, he'd come home and teach her what he'd learned that day, and once he had done so, they'd study together. When her brother Horatio was awarded a diploma from Dartmouth, he awarded Sarah with a diploma from the Horatio Gates Buell College and declared that she had graduated summa cum laude with a degree in the arts. Among her many accomplishments, she wrote a very successful book, Northwards, Life, North and South, which in England was called A New England Tale. This was one of the first books that dealt directly with slavery as a central part of the plot, and was also one of the few books out there written by a woman in her era, particularly in America. Not only is it impressive for her to get the book published at all in that day and age, but she wrote this book shortly after her husband died, leaving her with very little money and five kids to raise. After his death, she started and ran a millinery business, making hats for women to support her family, raised the kids, and published a book of poems for extra money called The Genius of Oblivion and Other Original Poems. This book was initially only marginally successful, but it was enough to allow her to stop having to make hats and focus on writing a novel. Her novel, Northward, ended up being extremely successful and was eventually read by the Reverend John Blake, headmaster of the Cornhill School for Young Ladies. 
He was so impressed by her work that he offered her a position as the editor of a women's magazine he was starting called The Ladies Magazine. This made her the first ever female editor of a magazine in the United States. She held this position for eight years before the magazine eventually merged with Goody's Ladies Book, which specifically targeted the magazine Hale worked at for acquisition because they wanted her as the editor of their journal. She held the position of editor for this journal for 40 years. With no significant competitors in the United States, and with her writing nearly half of the content for each journal in the beginning, both Goody's Ladies Book and Hale had a surprising influence on the United States during her time as editor. Goody's published on a huge range of topics, not just specifically related to women, but also such random things as housing design, with many of Goody's architectural house plans being popularly used by builders all over the country. The reason Hale had to write about half the articles for the journal in the beginning was that she wanted to only include American authors in goodies, and there simply weren't enough of them at first to fill the pages. Most publications got around this problem by simply having the vast majority of the articles they published be copies of works by British authors. Hale wanted to create a magazine that helped support Americans, who made a point of seeking out the most talented American authors to promote them to the very wide audience that subscribed to her magazine. Because of this, articles by most of the famed American authors of the era can be found in her publication. Hale's influence can be seen all throughout the United States during her lifetime, having a significant effect on how women dressed, what they cooked, what literature they read, how they conducted themselves morally, etc. The sort of Martha Stewart slash Oprah of her day. She also tirelessly promoted education for women, eventually even helping to found Vassar College. The idea of a women's college at the time was not looked upon favorably in the United States, as formal education for women was something frowned upon on the whole. Also, controversially, she convinced Vassar to hire a female administrator and female teachers, something that was almost never done at the time. In her spare time, if she had any, she helped found the Siemens Aid Society in 1833 in Boston, which is an organization that helps women obtain useful job skills and also helps to support them by giving them a place to live and food to eat while they attempt to establish themselves. Originally, this society was started to help those women whose husbands were lost at sea, leaving the surviving women and children typically destitute. If all of that isn't enough, she published nearly 50 volumes outside of what she produced for the journal she was editor for. These works were comprised of various novels and books of poetry. One such poetry book, targeted at children, produced the ever-popular Mary Had a Little Lamb, which was originally just called Mary's Lamb. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, it sure was a fascinating story. If you did, please give us a like below, it really helps out. And do subscribe to our channel for brand new videos every day. There is a big subscribe button on the screen now, just click that to do that. Also, if you're on a mobile device, there will be links in the description below. And also on the right there, a couple of other videos you'll probably like if you like this one. And thank you for watching.